we talk about this, you know, the reality of what's going on in these cities. And this story right here encapsulates a lot of what is going on. A horrific senseless assault by teens leaves neighborhood man with a broken jaw and his family shaken. During COVID, a family, a glider family, a glacier glider family, you call them colonizers and gentrifiers. During COVID, a glider family off of Kansas Avenue in Decatur Street put up an adjustable basketball hoop on their back deck right on the alley to let their two young kids play. The spot was popular with other neighborhood kids and the two homeowners were happy to let the children use their net whenever they wanted. Right there. They couldn't see it. Like, you can't open doors. You can't let these people in, man. They're predators. That's the way they raised up. I don't... Listen. They're raised to be predators. And bullies. This was a huge mistake. Letting all the neighborhood... First of all, putting the hoop up where it's facing the alley, where, like, the alley is the court and the hoop is just... So, like, they were going to use it anyway if you didn't let them use it. <laughs> but, you tell, but this guy telling them, the neighborhood kids, that they could use it was just, like, a formality. Like, they was going to use it anyway. The basketball hoop is now gone, along with the staircase from, from the back deck to the alley. And the window blinds are drawn closed. What started out as a normal night on April 11th turned absolutely nightmarish for the family as the four young kids, two of whom were teens, attacked the husband and left him knocked out in the alley with a broken jaw, missing teeth, and more injuries. Who's shocked that that's how this turned out? If I was his friend, I would have told him, man, what the hell are you about to do? Oh, no, don't do that. And he would have told me, oh, no, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, I, 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 the kids in the day, they're great kids. Yeah, but it's a different, a great kid means something different in every community. Like, I was a great kid because I didn't, wasn't out here shooting people. I was doing everything. <laughs> so that's relative. And also, you want to be, you're this liberal, you know, guy. You move with your family into the city and you're going to prove to everyone, you know, you're going to be the test case. Do that as a single man. Don't do that with your family. Don't put your wife and your kids in, in that. They didn't sign up for this. The couple, who wish to remain anonymous, so we'll call them John and Jane, would raise or lower the basketball hoop to fit whomever came to play, making it easier to use. Around 7.30 p.m. on Monday night, April 11th, as dusk slowly fell, four kids showed up at the back of the house. One was reportedly as young as 10. One was pushing a stroller. And two were older teens. One older teen was wearing a black sweatshirt with a white rectangle. The other older teen a yellow jacket. John greeted the kids and lowered the net to make it easier for them to play and dunk the ball. God, John, I feel so bad. John just did. 
When you move to these neighborhoods, look at what other people are doing. Do you see other people doing this type of stuff? Don't come in thinking, oh, I'm going to be the nice. I'm going to be, we're going to be just walking around the neighborhood, just doing everything. We're going to leave our, look at what every else is. The people who have been living there already, they don't leave their toys and strollers on the front porch like you did in your old neighborhood. Their kids ain't outside playing. They don't have basketball. They're not being all friendly with the neighborhood kids. Because they've been there all day. They've been there. The people they know. There's a ticking time bomb that they'll always turn on you. Little sun teens will always turn on you. I mean, always. There's no level of niceness you can do that won't make them turn on you. They will always Sean Taylor you. Go look up the story of Sean Taylor, the, the great safety for the Washington Redskins. They will always turn on you. They, it's just, that's just what they do. So John greeted the kids and lowered the net to make it easier for them to play and dunk the ball. He told them that they could play for a little while, but they had to. <laughs> This is a huge mistake. But they'd... But... <laughs> He told them that they could play for a little while, but that they'd need to stop when it got late, as his young five-year-old daughter would need to go to bed, and the hoop was below her window. <laughs> so right there, he's already messed up. He's already told the kids that they had to leave. And you never, under any circumstance, tell, even if you're telling them you can play at the court that, that I put up at my house that I made for my kids, but I'll let you use it. But my five-year-old daughter has to go to sleep. So at some point, you're going to have to, you know, wrap things up because she needs to go to bed. In their mind, you're still telling them to leave. <laughs> so they have to defy that. You're still giving them an order. They have to take that as a, a front. And this guy didn't know that. Those of you subscribed to this channel know. John went out and adjusted the hoop for them, as he often does, as a kindness. And got out the basketballs we keep on hand, Jane said. He asked them to be sure to stop playing at dark so he could get our daughter to bed without noise. At 9.30, they were still playing. <laughs> totally disrespectful and selfish. And <laughs> this is rotten. Just stains. Just rotten. Like the guy told y'all, his daughter, five-year-old daughter needs to go to sleep. It's not, it's, he brought balls out for you to play. He lowered the court. You can play, but my daughter needs to go to sleep. So can you guys just, you know, play for a little while and then wrap it up? 9.30, they're still playing. I'm saying the five-year-old probably goes to bed at about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. So him and his wife were in there. She's like, John, are you going to tell him to stop playing? And he was like, he, know, he knew he messed up. He didn't want to call the police because, you know, if the police show up, they're just going to pull up and shoot these kids like they did Tamir, Tamir Rice, right? And make sure you check out my Tamir Rice video. I'll put the link in the description. I broke that whole situation down to a bionic compound. But the cops are just going to show up and shoot him like they did Tamir Rice. So this pasty liberal, he, he buys into that. He subscribes to that. But if he calls the cops, he's putting these kids' lives in danger. <laughs> Not that these kids are going to be like, oh, shit, and leave before even the cops come. Or just leave when the cops, when the cops come. Or the fact that he never sees stories of little kids being shot down by cops. And the one they have is from 10 years ago. And 
course, I broke that down if you saw my video. So he's not going to call the cops. So him and his wife are in there. They're like, honey, what are you going to do? You going to go out there? She keeps telling him. Megan, Madeline has to go to sleep. Can you go out there and tell them to stop? And he's like, they'll stop soon. Trust me. Hour goes by. 30 more minutes goes by. Not for 30 minutes. And finally, he's like, all right. All right, Jane, I'll go out. I'll tell them that they need to stop. Jane says her husband is of slight stature, not an imposing presence, and is soft-spoken. He reportedly walked halfway down the stairs to the alley and calmly asked them to wrap it up as the noise was keeping up his daughter. John is just a very calm guy, Jane said. After he asked him to stop playing, the bigger of the teens came at John on the stairs yelling, What did you say to me? Why are you coming at me? <laughs> right then, John should have ran. Right then, John should have ran. And I know you don't want to run back in your house, tuck your tail, but you open this door. And he's lucky that none of his family members were hurt because he was unconscious. He's lucky these kids didn't run in his house. The boy then rushed John and punched him in the head. John fell or was pulled from the staircase unconscious and the kids allegedly proceeded to kick and stomp on him. He doesn't remember anything after the first punch. What the couple has pieced together from the blood trail in the alley, John's injuries and police discussions is that John was knocked out by the first punch thrown down the stairs and stomped out as police told them, kicked in the body and the face repeatedly. A neighbor's camera footage shows the kids leaving the alley shortly after, strolling with no sense of urgency or fear, though John was unconscious and bleeding badly a few feet behind them. I'll repeat that. A neighbor's camera footage shows the kids leaving the alley shortly after, strolling with no sense of urgency or fear, though John was unconscious and bleeding badly a few feet behind him, Jane said. On a video recorded by a neighbor's security cam, the teens can be heard exclaiming how the video on one of their phones was still on and recording during the assault. I had my phone still recording, one boy says. You ain't move it, the other asks. Yeah, the first boy responded. So they were recording themselves playing ball when poor John came out to ask them to wrap it up. So they got footage of John getting curb stomped. That footage probably been all through the hood. That footage has probably brought so many, so much joy to so many people, so many oohs and ahs to people in the hood. That footage probably been seen. <laughs> Poor John. John had six broken bones in his face. Six. I didn't even know it was that many bones in your God. Honestly, your skull, your jaw, your orbital, your nose. So he brought a skull fraction, orbital, maybe both orbitals, your nose, your jaw, maybe your, your column, the your teeth. That's a lot of bone. Anyway, well, they were stomping him for a long time after he was unconscious. So when you can't brace, when you just limp like this, 
It is. You do eat, though. You eating everything. It's not even like you. You're just eating everything. So, yeah. So, he had six broken bones in his face, including his orbital bone, nose, and jaw, and had most of his lower teeth broken. There was so much blood that it has seeped into the concrete in the alley and won't go away despite cleaning, Jane said. There was so much blood that it seeped into the concrete in the alley and won't go away despite cleaning. So after this guy was knocked out and laying there limp and lifeless, and exposed and vulnerable, these teens commenced to stomping a mud hole in his face. Solutions, anyone? Solutions. While MPD showed up quickly, the responding officers told the couple, they shouldn't have spoken to the teens, but called MPD to remove them. I repeat, while the Metropolitan Police Department showed up quickly, the responding officers told the couple they shouldn't have spoken to the teens. Now, some people will say that that's blaming the victim. That's not blaming the victim. That's cops that patrol these neighborhoods every day. Telling you, a nice couple who's moved to the city, and you know, you're going to be the neighborhood hangout for the team. Your house, you're going to now make your house the neighborhood hangout for the team, for the local team. You should not have spoken to them. You should have called the Metropolitan Police Department to remove them. Now, yes, if the police would have came the next day, you would have. I, I would. Have, I would take the court down the next day. Don't leave that. Don't call the police on them and leave the court up because the next day they'll come around there, cussing, cussing you out and yelling at you. May, may throw bricks through your window, but they're definitely going to do that. Let me. <laughs> The next day, they're definitely going to throw bricks through your window and um, throw rocks through your window. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? They're probably going to shoot your house up. It ain't that serious, but they definitely come back and throw rocks through these people's window. Or if they saw them outside, they would yell at them and curse them out. So that would have, but at this, but that would have been better than getting curb stomped. So there's no solution. But there's the lesser of two evils. Calling the police. And then just being like. Picked on by a bunch of teenagers for the rest of the time you live around there. Until they get bored or get locked up or get killed. But The last thing we wanted to do was call the police on four black kids playing basketball in an alley, Jane said. <laughs> the last thing we wanted to do was call the police on four black kids playing basketball in an alley, Jane said. My husband had already spoken to them had set up the net for them. Everything seemed fine. <laughs> then this attack happened. It just seemed so ruthless to attack him, leave him bleeding on the ground as they calmly walked away. Well, Jane, <laughs> imagine if you hadn't been that nice guy that let them play basketball at your court, adjusted the rim for them, let them gave them balls. Like they didn't even have to come with a ball. You give them the ball. And you adjust the rim for them to make it to the height that they wanted. And you let them play. 
or your kids in, in the house trying to sleep. Imagine if you hadn't done all that. Imagine what they'd have done to you, John. You just some random person that hadn't had all that cachet of that currency with them. You you built up a rapport with them. And that's what they did to you, John. Imagine if you just some random guy. Adding insult to injury, the ambulance reportedly took more than 20 minutes to arrive. John was taken to MedStar Washington Medical Center, but oddly not admitted as a trauma patient. He was left in the hallway until they operated on him. They had to remove the teeth from the front of his lower jaw because they were all broken at the roots. Do you know how hard it is to break somebody's teeth at the roots? So what I'm assuming is that he, at some point he got face down and they were kicking the back of his head because you can't break those teeth at the root with your the soles of your feet. That would be the pressure of him being kicked in the back of the head and his face being against the concrete in the alley. There's no way they could have broken all his teeth out at, at the root. They might have. They Maybe they could have. I don't know. It just took a lot. They were really angry. And look at John. John John didn't get no privilege. Look at <laughs> John's privilege. This this is this this dispels the myth of glider privilege on so many levels. Adding insult to injury, the ambulance reportedly took more than 20 minutes to arrive. <laughs> John was taken to MedStar Washington Medical Center, but oddly not admitted as a trauma patient. <laughs> he was left in a hallway until they operated on him. They had to remove the teeth from the front of his lower jaw because they were all broken at the roots. After the surgery, he was left in the hallway again for 24 hours, then sent home with fentanyl. The couple asked why he wasn't being admitted or his other broken bones tended and was told there were no rooms available and they'd have to call other hospitals to see if he can be admitted. Wow. Glider privilege, huh? Is this that glider privilege I've been telling us about? Sounds like a nightmare. This whole thing sounds like a nightmare. They managed to get John into George Washington Hospital, where he had another surgery to repair his jaw and nose. We know he needs at least two more surgeries to his mouth and teeth and possibly additional reconstruction of his lip and orbital bone. After a week, he is finally home. But he can only have liquids for the next six weeks. And we know this is the beginning of a long road. I'm afraid to have my children see him. They think daddy fell down the stairs. <laughs> because his face is so damaged. They are upset and asking why we have taken down the basketball hoop and removed the stairs. We don't have answers. All of the neighbors are very upset, Jane said. I bet not upset enough to tell to tell you which teens it was. Not as upset enough to, to snitch. Jane had a handyman come over and take down the basketball hoop and remove the stairs, sealing the deck from the alley. For the first time ever, I lowered the blinds on the first floor, she said. The stairs had John's blood on them, and we didn't want the kids to see that. We believe in the city. Believe in staying here, Jane said. She said her first reaction was to leave. Sell the house, run. For the first time, she thought, can we afford Bethesda, which is a, a suburb, a pasty liberal suburb, 
in Montgomery County, which is turning to crap too slowly because of you know who. Can we afford Tacoma Park and Silver Spring, which have already been, they're already ruined. Some people have already ruined Tacoma Park and Silver Spring. They're done. Those places are done. Bethesda, eh, holding on. Tacoma Park and Silver Spring, it's, it's a wrap. Then she went on to say, but once I was calmed down and with my children and really thought about what happened, it seems like one person snapping is so a rational way. She says it seems like one person snapping in so a rational way. That wasn't one person snapping. They all stomped your kid's head, your, 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 your husband's head in. And left him there to die. And that was just the. Oh, so she thinks that that was just that one kid to work that they have to. Oh, wow. Damn. There's no solution for this either. Um, she says. It seems like one person snapping in so irrational way. It wasn't a planned crime. It was a crazy moment in time. It seems too specific to be scared of it happening again. I hate the idea that we will worry more and feel less comfortable, she said. God, this woman is, she, she's hopeless. But I will feel less comfortable about my kids playing in the alley. We had to take the basketball hoop down. I love that so many different kids came and played. <laughs> and there was a trusting relationship about it. I'm angry still. And every time I see the blood in the alley, I'm so angry. I feel helpless. It's shock and sadness at this happening at all. Particularly with John. He's a really good, really nice person. And having this happen to him. The MPD detective told Jane that while they were investigating, they didn't yet have any leads. <laughs> Not one lead. And as somebody's kids, those kids was they their parents living in that no leads. Those kids probably lived in that they kids probably grew up in that neighborhood. No leads. I hope these kids end up in prison. I mean, they probably will eventually, but they'll probably get off scot-free for now and will be free to continue terrorizing the community. This person right here says, I can't imagine why anyone would be surprised about what happened. This person says, four young kids, two of whom were teens. Are there any other characteristics you could provide that might assist in identifying who people should be avoiding, if at all possible? This other guy says, not allowed to say it. This person says something eerily similar happened about a year ago at Hamilton Park. Four or five preteens viciously attacked a dad who told the group not to bully his child. The preteens were also recording the attack on their phones. The police responded quickly and detained the attackers. I can't help but wonder whether these are the same offenders. See, that's that's gliders. Listen, it's Washington, D.C., Chocolate City. There's thousands of clicks and crews like this. In a neighborhood like this, there's hundreds of little, there's a thousand teens in that one neighborhood. 
just roaming around with no parental supervision, looking for trouble. It, it could be the same kids. Hey, what's he talking about? This person says, since they do not prosecute minors in D.C., <laughs> and there is a push to raise the age of non-prosecution to 25, it's a distinct possibility this won't be their first time being caught. In the interest of not putting people who commit violent crimes in jail, we are all asked to repeatedly be violent crime victims. 